I'm Jan Ozer. In two tutorials, I'm going to show you how to create a broadcast quality live production with the new tech TriCaster TC40, which was provided by this video sponsor, VideoGuys.com. In the first tutorial, I'll show you how to select and configure the inputs. In the second, you'll learn how to mix and stream the show itself. During the tutorials, I'll only touch on a fraction of the TC40's overall functionality. But I'm sure you'll be convinced that if you've got a live production planned, the TC40 should be on your shortlist of live video switchers. The definition of broadcast quality is admittedly pretty blurry. Here I'm producing a webinar that will include full screen video, picture in picture video, PowerPoint slides from a separate computer, full screen and lower third graphics, disc based videos, pre and post show advertising and credits, transitions for all elements, and, of course, audio. Let's start with a quick tour of the relevant portions of the TriCaster 40 interface. The TC40 has 14 switchable input channels, all reflected in the program and preview buttons here. There are four video inputs. I'll use two. One cropped to 4x3 for the picture-in-picture, -picture, and the other at native 16x9 for the full screen view. There are two network inputs that can accept audio and video from any Mac or Windows computer on the same network as the TC40, or from any Apple device via AirPlay. There are two graphics inputs, which I'm using for my full screen and lower third titles, and a digital disc recorder for opening and closing credits and to play a short tutorial video. The TC40 also supports four virtual inputs that let you combine content from different sources. More on this in a moment. Note that I've customized some of the names of these three rows. For example, the first two video inputs would be 1 and 2, but I've changed that to Full and Crop by right-clicking the button and entering the new name. The first network input would be Net1, but I changed that to PPT for PowerPoint. Similarly, the first virtual input would be V1, but I've changed that to PIP. All this makes it simpler to choose the right button during the live event. All of the external and graphics inputs have their own preview windows, which are up here. On the right, the program monitor shows the input then live, while the preview window shows the input queued to appear when triggered via this transition bar, or the equivalent keystroke or command on the control surface. Though I'll cover this in more detail in the next tutorial, to take any input live, just click the input in the program row. To queue input that's being previewed, just click the Take or Auto button, or drag the T-bar. OK, let's configure the inputs. Configuring the cameras is simple. You just plug them into the input port and turn them on. You can adjust the incoming video with these ProcAmp controls. The TC40 includes 24 virtual sets that I won't use for this presentation, but here's where you would insert and adjust the key. And here's where I crop the input from this camera to make it fit better as a picture-in-picture -picture within the PowerPoint slides. To add the input from a Mac or Windows computer on the same LAN as the TC40, you just download and install a free application from the NewTek site. Once the TC40 senses the network input, you can click this menu to select it. For graphics, you can use your own files, or you can start with some of the template families that NewTek provides. I've got a full screen title in Graphics 1, and a lower third in Graphics 2. To add a new title, just click Add, then navigate to the desired template. Then you can customize the content as needed. The DDR contains the still image and video files that I'll use at the start and end of the webinar, and also the tutorial file that I'll play during the webinar. Off to the side, I've got multiple playlists, one labeled Intro, the other Ending. Each contains the files that I want to play at that time. To add files to the playlist, just select it, click Add, and navigate to your files. Here, I've deselected Single on the lower right so that all files play sequentially. With Single selected, they would play one at a time. I've also enabled Autoplay so that the files start to play as soon as DDR is selected during the live event. 
Note that I can use these handles to set the in and out points for any content in the DDR. That makes it simple to queue portions of the video files during the live event. Now let's look at the virtual inputs. As mentioned, these let me combine multiple inputs into a single visual input. Here, the PowerPoint slides with the picture-in-picture -picture video. That's why I've labeled it PIP. I'll select the PIP in the program row so we can see what's going on. Input A and B work as layers, B on the bottom, A on top. On B, I'll select the PowerPoint input from Network Input 1. For Input A, I'll use the cropped video from Live Input 2, which I can resize and position with these controls. During the live event, when I'm ready to switch to the PowerPoint input with Picture in Picture, I just click PIP. To show just the PowerPoint slides, I click Network Input 1 which I've labeled PPT. Now I've got all my video inputs covered, let's look at the audio side. The TC40 has two external audio inputs, one stereo line level input and one microphone input. I'm using the microphone input for this presentation. In the audio mixer, the stereo connector is input one, the mic input two. Next comes inputs for the two network inputs, PPT and then two, plus inputs from the DDR and graphics tracks. You can enable and disable all inputs with this icon. Note that the microphone has a trim control that lets me set levels for different microphones. Then I can adjust gain with this slider. By default, the microphone input is sent to both stereo channels for broadcast and streaming. The talk checkbox lowers all other inputs by 20 dB when the microphone channel is enabled, allowing the narration to take priority. The Follow checkbox fades out the sound when that input is not live. The Solo checkbox directs audio to the headphone port when the source isn't currently selected. This is useful for previewing audio before taking an input live. On the extreme right, the Master Output outputs all live audio outputs. The Streaming Output can output all sources as well, but can also output these discrete tracks or all solo tracks. This makes it possible to create one audio mix for broadcast and archiving, and another for streaming. Okay, all of our inputs are configured and we're ready to go live. I'll show you how in the next tutorial. For more information about the TC40, contact this video's sponsor, videoguys.com at 1-800-323-2325. I'm Jan Ozer, thanks for watching. Videoguys.com is your source for streaming media and live production equipment, storage, and video editing hardware and software. We have specialized in video editing and production for more than 25 years, and our technicians are available to answer your questions and help you find the best solution for your needs and budget.